In this lesson, you're going to learn how to configure your gradebook. So I've gone ahead and added a few additional activities that are graded, such as assignments and some quizzes right over here, so that we can have a few examples that we can work with in the gradebook. And I've also added some grades uh, for these activities or assignments and quizzes to the student's gradebook. So if we were to simply click on grades right over here, just to see what it looks like, but a grade reporter. So this is basically what the gradebook looks like. You'll find the names of the students over here on the left. And when you scroll over, you'll start seeing the title of the graded activity, whether it's an assignment or a quiz. And you'll see that these dark or bolded um, labels right here don't have anything underneath them. Because, and that's because these are actually the labels for the categories that these activities need to go into. However, these are not currently organized correctly. Um, so you'll see that the quizzes and the exams are bundled together. And you've got a discussion here and um, some assignments towards the end. And what I typically like to do is I like to group the graded activities by categories. And there are two ways to do that. Uh, the first way is to select the category when we are creating these activities like we did in a prior lesson. Um, but let's say that you've uh, not done that and you've added some additional um, categories later on. You can still go ahead and correct the placement of these graded activities. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to go ahead and click on Setup. And at the very top right over here, let me zoom in. This is the name of the course, and this basically shows you everything that's in the gradebook. Anything that is a black folder is a category, and underneath it, this is the sum total of the value of all of the activities in that category. So what we want to do now is we want to go ahead and take all of the assignments, such as homework number one, and we've also got some assignments over here, and we want to go ahead and place it under the assignments folder. And to do that, what we need to do is we need to select the items that we want to move. So we will go ahead and check that assignment. We're going to scroll down and see what other assignments are available. And then we've got the profile assignment. We've got the headshot assignment. And that's about it. Uh, this is a separate group project which we'll put under that category. So once we've selected the items that we want to move, we can scroll to the bottom of the page and it says right there, move selected item 2 and then you get to choose which category. So I'm going to go ahead and place them under assignments. And then as you can see, the system automatically grouped these under the assignment category. And we can go ahead and do the same thing for the other categories. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for the quizzes and the exams. So let's go ahead and check all of the assessments right there. And then we will move these under quizzes and exams. Great. So these are grouped together as well. And then these activities right over here are basically a part of the group project. So we're going to go ahead and check these three right there and move them under group project. Perfect. So we've got everything grouped in the correct category. We've got the assignments under assignments, and then we've got the project, and the discussion board is already there because we did that earlier on in a previous lesson where we put it under the correct category. OK, so once you've done this, in the event that your grading uh, scale includes a weight for the activities or the categories, you can go ahead and actually change the weights. In my particular case, I don't use weights. Um, I basically use a sum of all points in my classes to grade the students. So in this particular homework, the maximum points that the students get is 50 uh, points, um, and then so on and so forth. So I don't use weights. I basically use cumulative points in my particular class. If you did want to go ahead and modify the uh, weight system, you can go ahead and do that also through the gradebook. But let's go ahead and first save what we did right here. And if you wanted to modify the weights for these activities, so right now these are not selected and they're not really included into the weight. Uh, what you could do if you wanted to is you can either click on the particular item and specify the weight that you want to have for each of these graded activities, 
or you can select the weight based on the totality of the group, which is right here. So let's say that I want all of my assignments, regardless of the point value, to be worth 20%. This is where basically I would change the weight for that particular grouping. But as I said, in my particular courses, I don't use weights. I use cumulative points, so I am not going to do that. The next thing that we're going to learn how to do is how to go ahead and set up the letter grades, because if we go ahead and save and change and take a look at the gradebook one more time, as you can see, now the activities are all grouped together. So the assignments are here and the point values are here. But let's say that you wanted to add a percentage or a letter grade, an A, a B, or C for these activities. You can go ahead and specify how you want the grades to be reflected by going to letters. And as you can see here, there is a predefined a letter grade system and percentage system in Moodle. This is a default. However, you are not bound by it. You can change this if you would like to. So in this particular setup, an A is 93% or higher, an A minus is 90 to basically 92.9. And let's say that we want to go ahead and change this. And in my particular case, I always change these for a couple of reasons. In my particular school where I've taught at the college, we do not have pluses and minuses. We only have letter grades such as A, B, C, D, and F. So that's typically what I do in my particular courses when I'm teaching at the college. I will click on Edit, and I will click on Override. So that's what you would need to do if you want to modify any of these percentages or the letter grades. And we're going to go ahead and remove the ones that we don't want. So I don't want to have any of the pluses and minuses, so I'll go ahead and start removing all of these. Let's go and delete all of this right here. So we're going to start adding in the percentage value. So for me, anything that is 59% or above would be a D. 69 and above would be a C. And then 79 and above would be a B. And then anything that is over 89 and above would be considered a, an A. Once we've corrected that or changed that, we can go ahead and save. Now we've only changed the percentages and the letter grades on the scale. However, this is not currently reflected in the gradebook. So if we were to go back to the gradebook under view, you will see we still have the point system right over here. But if I wanted to go ahead and add percentages or letter grades, we would go back under setup. And we're going to go under course grade settings. Select that. You'll need to go to grade item settings. and where it says great display type, this is where basically it specifies how it's going to get reflected. And if you want to see how these are set up and you click on the drop down, you're just going to see a lot of percentages. So real basically indicates the point value that the students earned, which is what is currently refle reflected. If you wanted this to be uh, a point system and a percentage, you want to select that. If you just want it to be a percentage, you would select the percentage. If you wanted to have the letter grade, you would use the letter grade. If you want letter grade and point, you would use this one right here. And then once again, if you wanted to use percentages, you would use letter and a percent. In my particular case, I typically go for the real uh, point value as well as a letter grade. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do letter and real. But in your particular case, if you want to do a percentage, you can go ahead and do that. So I'm going to select letter and the point value system. And I use two decimal places, which is fine. Scroll to the bottom, save. Now that we're back in the gradebook, you can see that every student has a letter grade as well as the points that they earn for the particular assignment, quiz, or exam. And this is how you can go ahead and configure your gradebook. There are a lot of settings that you can play with within the gradebook. Don't hesitate to try things and experiment and see what works for you.